Welcome back to EPRV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here and today we have got a bevy of Olympus cameras because we have brand new firmware updates. I'm using the EM1X today with the brand new 2.0 firmware and Jordan is shooting the entire video today on an EM1 III with its brand new 1.2 version firmware. He's going to talk a bit about that later and I primarily want to test out the new bird autofocus feature that has been added on the EM1X. We're at the Inglewood Bird Sanctuary. I can hear birds. Hopefully we'll go find some. So in the last few years, all the manufacturers have really been trying to up their autofocusing game, adding advanced autofocus features, incorporating deep learning technology, and trying to basically enhance the user's success rate. Now, Olympus is no exception, and in the last few years, the emphasis has really been on face and eye detect technology for all the manufacturers. Now, a lot of other companies then went into animals, you know, really trying to get pets, uh, pets eyes, dogs, cat photos. Now, Olympus kind of went a different direction with the EM1X, because instead, they went to a planes, trains, and automobiles autofocus system. Now one of the big changes for version 2.0 firmware on the EM1X is to add now a bird detect technology. And this makes a lot of sense because first off, Micro Four Thirds platforms have become very popular with wildlife photographers. Olympus developed a big following in the birder community. This doesn't have an animal detect autofocus yet, but for birds, I am curious to see how it's gonna function. Let's go try it out. Setting up the bird detect autofocus is very easy. Go in the menu, choose autofocus tracking mode, choose the bird detect tracking, and then make sure that I turn on continuous autofocus plus tracking. Now I do wanna give you some context here. Olympus's tracking has often been quite uh, unreliable in the past. When we were in Costa Rica, we tried it with birds and stuff, just using regular tracking, and it would often lose the target. You really just had to go back to using continuous autofocus with a zone area or single point recompose to get any sort of success rate. So I could see why they wanted to improve this. All right, here's the good news about this autofocus tracking for birds. First off, it's finding the birds very effectively, whether I'm shooting geese or ducks or chickadees or crows, like all different shapes and sizes. It's finding them and drawing boxes around them. I'm finding it very useful if I have a bird in flight. It's doing a great job now of tracking it, whereas before I would often find the tracking system would just jump off onto something else. Now there are some downsides here I wanna talk about and some difficulties. Now this camera finds birds so effectively that if you've got a lot of birds in the frame, it will find all of them. It'll draw boxes over everything. It can be quite distracting. I can't just choose a bird and say only this bird. The camera will jump back and forth between them so keep that in mind. Here's another issue I had here. I had one single bird. I've got branches in front and then the bird in behind and the branches aren't blocking it. And this is the exact kind of situation where this sort of deep learning technology should be helping me out. It should be able to focus on the bird and ignore the branches in the foreground. And it was drawing a box around that bird, but it just would not leave those branches. I actually had to hit the manual focus, push it to the background, and then it did focus on the bird. And that just seems strange to me. It was detecting the bird, but still refused to focus on it in that situation. So unfortunately, we still have some issues with reliability here and unpredictability. However, the original tracking autofocus was pretty terrible, honestly. And so this does really help. It seems to be finding birds and helping me to lock onto them. I think it could still be a very useful tool, especially trying to get birds in flight or birds with easy compositions. But be prepared to sometimes just have to kick out of the tracking and go back to good old fashioned single point or continue autofocus with a zone. Oh, I almost forgot. The firmware also adds a new manual focus assist tool. It's basically useless. Uh, it's a distant scale when you're manually focusing and it just shows you the classic mountain or flower, like we're talking green mode auto kind of stuff. Nobody's gonna find it useful. I far would have preferred inches, feet, meters, kind of distance scale. Anyways, there's a lot of changes though for video. So let's go over to Jordan next. Jordan here to talk about one of the biggest updates on this. With the EM1X and the EM13, we now get raw video coming out of the micro HDMI port out to an Atomos Ninja 5. It's filming me right now from an EM1X in ProRes RAW. We'll get to image quality here in a bit, but first I just want to mention a few limitations that you should be aware of. First of all, you can't see your actual composition on the LCD and EVF. It just shows your camera settings. Now, the Ninja 5 will be your monitor, and it is a really beautiful display, but if you're in a really bright day, I do like to fall back on the EVF. It's a shame that you can't use that. As well, we tested this with Final Cut Pro, and you don't have the Kelvin white balance adjustment when you import it. We've done some testing before, and we've found that that is quite a bit better than using the built-in three-way color corrector or other tools, so it's a shame we can't see that there. Last thing is, there's no audio coming straight out of the camera through the HDMI port, so you'll have to plug your external audio device right into the Ninja 5. 
Okay, but let's talk about the actual image quality out of this. Now, you can see here I ran a test where I recorded it at daylight white balance even though I was in tungsten, and I'm very easily able to correct it. And even after a heavy push like that, the image doesn't fall apart. It's still got a really lovely tonality to it. Now, there is a slight crop when you're recording in the raw video mode. So I was curious if there'd be any real image drawbacks like moiré or false color with the way that this is reading out. And shooting my false color basket here, I don't actually see any of that. Now, you can see it is quite a bit softer than the internally recorded video. Raw video always needs to be sharpened up a little bit, but even if you apply sharpening, you can see there's more actual detail in the internally recorded video. Low light is another area where super sampled video tends to give you less noise, and we can definitely see that here. The raw recording is much noisier than what we see internally. So if if you're pushing this past about 800 ISO, just switch to the internal recording, you'll get a much nicer picture. So we switched over to internal recording just to test the other major firmware feature, which is a tweak to the IBIS algorithm. Now what they've done is made it so it should be a little bit smoother if you're panning with a subject or walking with the camera like we're doing right now, but I've got to be honest, I didn't think Olympus had a problem with those before. So switching over here, we're not seeing a huge improvement. It's not because this update is bad, it's just the system was so great to start with, didn't really need it. Olympus shooters have always been stuck with 8-bit video, so it's great to finally have something a little bit more flexible. Sure, there's some stuff that I would love to see further tweaked in firmware, but if you already have an EM13 or an EM1X, this is an awesome video update, and I think you'll really enjoy it. So I think as you can see, these firmware updates are welcome, but they lack refinement. There's still a lot of work that has to be done to really make them into effective tools. And unfortunately, the scary thing is this is probably going to be the last firmware update that we see from Olympus while their camera division is still owned by Olympus. And beyond that, it's anyone's guess how often or if we're going to see firmware updates in the future. I hope we do. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Please subscribe to the channel. We really rely on that. Let us know any comments that you have below. Thanks so much for joining us and we shall see you soon.